An ex-WWE superstar is in talks with both WWE and AEW. We've got the original All Out and Full Gear main event plans, and AEW have transitioned some wrestlers to coach roles. Stay tuned to find out all the deets. Now we're going to kick things off with the news that an ex-WWE star has been in talks with both WWE and AEW. And during an appearance on the Fightful podcast, Maria Kanellis said that her per appearance deal with Impact Wrestling is up next month. Uh, so she said, I'm on a per appearance deal with Impact until October 8th. It's so hard to make decisions moving forward because I love what we're doing with Impact and I know the possibilities of where we might go with it and where I might go with it as an individual. Scott Demore is a fantastic boss and if I'm not in the Maria on a no more voice, I absolutely love what we're doing there. When the Kingdom won the tag titles, that meant something, especially after losing what to me was going to be the next 10 years of my life, if not longer, in Ring of Honor. I was looking at Ring of Honor like, okay, this is going to be the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, I'm going to run the women's division. I'm going to transition completely to the other side. I'm going to help with production. I want to move forward with taking over more responsibilities. Then it ended and Scott gave us an opportunity. It's really hard looking at where do I go next. I talk to Tony Khan. I talk to Triple H. I talk to Scott all the time. Recently, I talked to WOW. It's a very interesting time for me. For me, it's about creating opportunities for all of the women that I'm working with now. And I think Maria is certainly somebody who I can definitely see transitioning to that role at some point, but I, I think I think she's still got some some in ring time ahead of her. Yeah, I think she was a really pretty strong manager. I was always disappointed that we didn't get to see more of both her and Mike in WWE um, with the release or releases. Mm. Um, so I'd be interested to see what she would do. But I, I think she's somebody who probably has more to give at this point behind the scenes, which yeah. isn't to say that I don't want to see her on our screens or anything. But it's not but... you can't do sort of both. No, no, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, the money, if, if if she's talked to Triple H, so that means it's a very recent thing. Yeah. Um, Tony Khan, who knows when these talks have happened. Like, she could bring a lot to WoW. I think she brings a lot to Impact. Um, but money talks, right? And yeah. two of those companies, AEW and WWE, are going to be the ones that are going to pay her handsomely. But I'd, I'd be well up for seeing her back in. Fingers crossed, WWE. you know, if, if WWE do bring Maria and potentially Mike back, we don't get a, a retread of that that past kind of awkwardness where it was just shelved on the 205 and then it came up on Raw once or twice unannounced and then yeah, disappeared again. It was this song. It was banging. Yeah. What are you talking <laughs> The greatest, greatest. Um, yeah, she's got a really creative mind. Yeah. Um, but I'm about to contradict myself when uh, we cover this next story because yes. she's got a terrible idea here. No, uh, <laughs> she appeared on Grapsody with Will Washington uh, where she sort of defended a certain thing that people really, really, really don't like from WWE's recent past. Uh, she said, uh, there were a ton, Trish, Lita, Ivory caught the tail end of that, Victoria, Molly was in that era, you had workers, down the line you have Beth Phoenix, Melina, Mickey James, Natty, you had a ton of workers that came from the Indies too. It was a mix at that time. I think they should bring back the butterfly belt. <laughs> I do. The next bit, uh, you, you go get ready for your cackle again. I know people will disagree with me and that's fine. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's why wrestling is great because when you watch wrestling, you don't see everybody looking exactly the same, Canella said. After the Divas Re Revolution in 2015, WWE phased out the term. Obviously, uh, yeah. Mania 32, they brought in the new women's title. Uh, and we, we did away with that whole regrettable era, didn't we? Uh, and we had Trish and Mickey's response to this, uh, which was just, uh, well, Trish in particular retweeted a, an article that mentioned Maria say, bring back the butterfly belt with just quote tweet no uh mickey james said <laughs> no. personally i prefer the og women's championship nothing is prettier the women who held that championship were legends icons history makers game changers ceiling breakers today's road pavers this one not so much and uh, there's a way i think they could bring that belt back but it's going to be on a one storyline basis maybe where somebody you know jim duggins it out of the trash and yeah. insists that they're Divas champion. That's the only way I could see it kind of coming back now because the women's divisions moved so, so vastly beyond what the Divas division was. I actually kind of like that idea, like a throwback Diva who yeah. can't wrestle and brings back the Divas. I'm not saying that all the Divas it's champions like can wrestle, you, you know don't what I'm saying? Want. Yeah, right? <laughs> like a heel with that belt you. could actually yeah. be quite good. Um, I, uh, You know what? I disagree with Maria uh, and she says yeah. there people will disagree with me and that's fine. That's why wrestling's great because, you know, yeah. everybody doesn't look 
exactly the same. Um, and she, you know, she, her, her, into, uh, her opinion holds more weight than mine. That's yeah. for sure. I don't. I, I didn't personally like it, and I think it signifies a very poor era of women's wrestling in WWE. Like that. That is the the focal point. That is the image that you think of when it's you think the of the era they where they stuck on that whole division. Yeah, where yeah. where the the women's matches were getting three four minutes on a pay per view, and the in ring action wasn't especially great. Mm. With a few standouts, there yeah. were there were wrestlers during that era who could certainly go. Uh, I don't want to see it back, but she's entitled to her opinion. Yeah. That's well, fine. moving over to the AEW side of the fence, we're going to look at the original All Out and Full Gear main event plans. Uh, so, obviously, John Mox. Uh, John Moxley. John Moxley is the new AEW World Champion after defeating Brian Danielson on this week's episode of AEW Dynamite Grand Slam. Dave Meltzer of uh, Figure Four Wrestling Online commented on what was supposed to happen for the main events of All Out and Full Gear 22, and he said that Tony Khan put the interim championship on Moxley when CM Punk got hurt the first time because he thought Moxley was the best guy for the job and the guy to build up Punk before Punk faced MJF. The original plan for Chicago was Punk MJF, but because Punk got hurt and had to win the U unified championship they had to delay punk and mjf it was likely going to be for the november pay-per-view which is full gear so it's probably moxley and mjf at full gear most likely i just the crying shame here of missing mjf punk yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the one good thing about it is that even though Punk's gone now, this has elevated MJF. It's frustrating for us as fans, and no doubt the performers too. Is he, though? Who, Punk has elevated MJF? No, is, is he gone? I don't think he is. Yeah, I think he is. I think he'd be back. I, I don't think it's... I, I, I don't know what it is. I don't I, know where he go. You think he'll be back in AEW? Yeah, I think it'll no, just I be a, so. a heat dies down situation. No, I think he's, he's really pretty disliked backstage. Um, the, the thing about it, I think he's a generational talent. Like yeah. Punk is amazing, and with Punk, I feel something when mm. when I watch watch him, and that's been the case since his uh, you know Ring of Honor days when I yeah. was first introduced to him. But the bloke is a prick. Mm. The, the, like, you can't no, deny. No, yeah, no you can't deny sugarcoat in these words. Uh, and I understand there's a fine line, right, between respecting one's own value mm. and knowing that you're a you're a big name and you bring a lot of value to a company. Uh, but he's an arsehole. He's always been an arsehole. That's part of the reason that he's so interesting. Yeah. Um, but he's obviously rubbed a lot of people up the wrong way. Um, I don't think he would be welcomed back. Uh, at, at this at this point, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it depends on the legal stuff as well. We don't know what's going on. That's do it. We? And we could see a whole new direction if it, if it is indeed going to be Moxley MJF. Uh, I, I'm just desperate to see MJF with that big goal, but I don't want to. I, I don't want to rush to it. If there's a way we can draw it out a bit more, yeah, I, it, I it is a shame because it was just a, such a brilliant story. I think it's the best story that AEW have ever told yeah. in. Um, MJF and Punk and we're not going to get the conclusion that we all wanted to see. I, I think what Meltzer said there was sort of stating the obvious. I'm, I'm not, yeah. not having to go or anything but I, I think a lot of us thought that was the plan. Mm. Um, uh, Moxley versus MJF will be good but it, it obviously they, they've got a lot to do to give it the energy that CM Punk MJF yeah. had. Uh, well, keeping it with AEW, Tony Khan has commented on the future of media scrums as a concept within the company. Uh, speaking with Barstool Rasslin prior to Grand Slam, Khan argued that the media scrums were beneficial overall, noting, well, I think to be fair, we have had a lot of positive things, a lot of positive reactions. It's a great opportunity for the talent to get out and speak. Obviously, there's a lot of positives coming out from them. For example, tonight in Dynamite, we have the World Tag Team Champions Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland defending the titles against the Acclaimed. It was actually at our last pay-per-view, the All Out Media Scrum, that we had the conversation. I said to Keith and Swerve that was one of the best matches that we've ever had. Uh, the acclaimed are the winningest team in all of AEW, and if anyone yeah. deserves a rematch, it's those guys. That kind and of went off. They, that they, kind they, of went off side. Yeah, they, they won. They yeah, bloody they won. won. So he, that kind he, of went off sideways well, a little bit, didn't he, it? It was he, like Tony, what's the future of this? Have you ever tried pudding? <laughs> yeah, he did. He pudding went, is delicious. He, he tried, he, and he's been doing this a lot with yeah. stuff. There's stuff that he can and can't talk about, obviously, at the moment. So he did take it on a but bit. What of kind a, of a question of is? A are, are they beneficial? It's a media a scrum it's a press conference they're always I, beneficial I, I well was the last one and I, <laughs> has it? anybody stopped talking about AEW since no that, you know what that's a fair point but they've also had to suspend almost all of it he could have gone worse he could have he could have jumped in the front row and punched somebody out but he it, didn't essentially <laughs> he's saying that the positives outweigh the negatives yeah. and that situation probably won't happen again that's my understanding <laughs> without him actually saying it so don't expect the media scrums to go away because they yeah. do bring a lot of value 
And finally, we're going to jump over to uh, just the story about AEW transitioning some wrestlers to coach roles. Now, this is Fightful Select, a uh, subscription required for this, uh, providing the update that the original death dealer, Luther, helped coach a match at AEW Rampage Grand Slam and has been coaching for quite some time. Luther suffered an injury that sidelined him back in May, but he was cleared and appeared in early September at SOS hmm. Castaway. So this is good news for me because... <laughs> Luther's not that good. I don't know. I, I don't, no, don't get me wrong. He's yeah. got history. You'll, you'll know more about him than I will. I wasn't very, aware of I saw a very little. I, I, that, that, that was the confusing thing. They, they brought him in in this kind of like... He's got, He's a big legend. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah and I'm half the audience, sorry, 99% of the audience hadn't really heard of him. We know that he's just Jericho's mate. And I'm yeah. sure he's really like good. I'm sure he's got loads of knowledge. And the coaching role is actually probably ideal for him because I don't think anyone's getting excited by Luther matches. It's not the same but, thing as like Regal or Fit Finley being an old timer in yeah. WWE and they, you know, an audience was but really familiar with them. I guess Luther, who, Luther had the greatest deal of his success in, in Asia, in Japan. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that maybe it's, it, it might just be that we don't have that kind of generational connection to him because obviously we grew up watching you know Steven Regal William Regal and now we see William Regal as the manager now uh, and the, the former GM of NXT we've been on that journey whereas with Luther for a lot of people it was just kind of like he's a big deal and he just got dropped and it was like oh right when you do some digging he was that guy I don't really know much about that uh, but he's certainly somebody with the, the wealth of experience he's got yeah. that he's going to be able to impart some wisdom and uh, same goes for Sir Pentico who is uh, again been out of action and as of late, but was also coaching matches uh, recently using his 15 year experience to help out the roster. So I think, you know, if it's, if it's one of those things where the talent have that ability to, you know, to, to talk to and, and teach and lead people through things, then I think they should be, you know, capitalizing on it as, as much as they can. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I really like Sir Pentico, um, yeah. but I think Luther is probably more valuable behind the scenes. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Personally, because he's knackered. Because he's knackered. And, and, and anything and, else? No. no uh, do you like his face paint? Do I like his face paint? Have you seen any of his merch? <laughs> Does he got merch? I, uh, probably. Print on demand. Yeah, he's they're got not, that one. They've got, the, they've got the, <laughs> the, the, the tag one, I think. All oh, right. Oh, yeah. good. I'll pick one up. Yeah. Anyway, that was it for your second <laughs> dose of wrestling news. Uh, we might be back later with a third video of any more news breaks, so do keep it here with us at Cultaholic. In the meantime, stay safe. We'll see you in a bit.